y'all, it's Kay. I saw this piece on the Mackenzie Charles website and I thought, wonder if I can apply that to, on a small scale to just a TV table. So I have this old TV table that's been around a long time and you can find them easily at the thrift store. They're kind of nondescript and not that special, but let's make it over in the style. I'm going to use some white Krylon chalk paint, some black and white chalk paint, some gold acrylic paint in a metallic finish, some wood glue and some hot glue. I did not use the super glue. Some wood tumbling tower blocks. I glued them end to end and I used four sets of two. And I will also use some one inch brads to tack my pieces together. I'm also going to be using some wood strips that I got from Lowe's. They are about two and a half inches wide by three eighths inches thick. They came in three foot long pieces, so I bought two. I will cut them at two at 17 inches and two at 13 inches. The first thing I'm going to do is take my Krylon chalk paint and give my table a good coating. It took three coats, y'all, to really cover this table. Then I gave my trim pieces two good coats of white chalk paint as well. Then I took my white pieces once they had dried and I drew lines that were one inch apart all the way across all four pieces. Then I used some washi tape and I outlined all of my lines on my pieces so that I could more easily paint them with the black chalk paint. And that's what I did. I came in and painted every other stripe with black chalk paint. The next thing I needed to do is draw a grid on my tabletop and I'm using my quilting ruler and drawing lines that are an inch apart. I will do that all the way across and then turn it around and do it in the opposite direction and make like a checkerboard. Here you can see I went in and put little tiny X's on all of the squares that I wanted to paint black. I just thought this would be easier to keep me organized so I didn't make a mistake. And it worked just fine. To paint my squares black, well, I tried a variety of things. I tried the washi tape again. I tried using a credit card and outlining the squares. I finally decided there is no better method than just to go in and freehand it inside the squares that I want to be black. So after I got it outlined using my black jot marker that I got from the Dollar Tree, I went in with my black chalk paint and carefully painted every other square in the black. I wanted you to know it took me 38 minutes to do the entire tabletop, so it wasn't hours and hours like you would think. Now just one more thing to paint on this project. I'm going to paint the edge of my table all the way around with this gold metallic paint. This just gives somewhat the same feel as the picture I showed you. Now I'm going to attach those tumbling blocks to the sides of my table. I'm going to use the wood glue and the hot glue, and I'm just going to push it right up against the pieces that are already on the bottom of this table. I just need to do it on the two long sides. So using the same process, that's what I do. The side pieces had enough support. So now I'm going in once again with wood glue and hot glue, and I'm just going to glue my piece to the front of the table and then to the sides. Later, I'm going to add just some small brads right in the corners to make sure it stays secure. And here I am doing the last side. It started out as just a plain table and I think this zhuzhed it up just perfectly. Does it have the exact feel of the Mackenzie Childs? Well, no, I don't think that can be accomplished by one so small, but I think I will come back and add black legs to my table. Today we are excited to be teaming up with seven talented friends for a viewer scavenger hunt. Let us explain how it works. All eight channels will have a DIY video in a playlist with the link to the playlist in our description box below. Watch all eight videos from the playlist and comment on each video. Each creator will reveal a secret word somewhere during their video. Collect all eight secret words and email them to us at DIYScavengerHunt 
at gmail.com. The email will be listed in the description box below. We will randomly draw the winner from those who qualify on Saturday, May 15th, 2021. The winner will be announced on our community tabs. Follow the treasure map through all eight channels and you could win the ultimate treasure of a Cricut Joy and tool set. We are sorry, but due to shipping issues, the contest is limited to the continental United States. Good luck, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this frame that I found at the thrift store for 79 cent. This frame that I got from the Dollar Tree, some chalk paint in white, ink, and maize, some gold metallic paint from Crafter's Closet, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So it took me a while to get on the Mackenzie Childs train, but I have actually fallen in love with it now. I was looking on the website the other day and I saw this frame that I really loved, but I couldn't pay that price for it. So I thought we would try to make it ourselves. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the back from my frame and take out the glass. And then I just use a piece of sandpaper and lightly go over this. I'm just wanting to rough it up. It was a little bit slick and I wanted something for my paint to grip onto. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and give it two good coats. It did take two good coats to cover those words that were on there. And I am only painting the top of this. I did not want to get it on the sides. That's why you see me doing these little light strokes um, pushing out from the edge because I wanted to get as little on that edge as possible. Now I still got a little bit, but I will go and fix that. That's no big deal. And once I got all these little light strokes on there, then I started doing long strokes in the same direction so that I would have a smooth paint job. Now I'm going to take the back and the glass out of this little frame that I got from the Dollar Tree and remove those tabs. We don't need those. Then I'm going to give it two good coats of my maize chalk paint that I got from Waverly. Now you don't have to do this step. I am gonna be using that gold metallic paint and it's kinda, it goes on kinda thin and I didn't want it to have to use so many coats. So I thought if I gave it a good coat of my chalk paint that it would give it something to hold on to and maybe I wouldn't need as many coats and it actually did work. I'm using the maize because it was the closest color I had to the gold. Once that had completely dried, I took my metallic gold paint and I start painting over it. And now you see it covers really well. You can't really tell here, but it is a little bit streaky with just one coat. I still had to use two, but I only had to use two. If I had not done this chalk paint on it, I think it would have taken many, many coats to cover up that black frame. Now that my paint is dry on my main frame, I am going to start making my grid. I wanted to use washi tape like Kay used on her project, but I could not find my washi tape and I did not want to go into town to get more. So I just grabbed one of those placemats from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a strip that was a half an inch and I start making lines all the way across my frame. Once I got them all the way across, then I just turn it and I do them horizontally. Once I had my lines on, I took my Jot Permanent Marker and I started filling them in. Now, you don't have to use a permanent marker for this. You could use a paint pen or you could just use paint and a brush and fill these in. But I don't have a lot of confidence. My hand tends to shake and I feel like I have more control when I use my permanent markers. So I use those to fill in my lines and make my grid. Once I got this finished, I started filling in every other little box until I had my check pattern completed. Now, <laughs> I just kind of eyeballed these and you can tell that they're a little crooked. Kay would have measured them out and had them perfect, but I'm a little impatient, but I also like whimsy. So I like having them a little imperfect and I was happy with the way they turned out. 
Once I had finished my check pattern, I took one of my furniture repair markers that I get from the Dollar Tree. I'm using the ebony one and I'm just kind of going along those edges and fixing where a little bit of paint got and fixing the nicks that was on this from the thrift store. Now we're going to attach our gold frame to our check frame. So I'm just centering it up, making sure it fits right, and then I use my glue gun and put a lot of hot glue on there and glue it right down. Now I'm gonna take my Mod Podge. I am using the Glossy Mod Podge and I'm gonna give this a really good coat. This does two things. It protects my paint, but it also gives it that glossy look like the porcelain one that is on the McKenzie Childs website. And there's our finished project. I'm really happy with how this turned out. You can see it there compared to hers. Hers is more perfect for sure, but I'm really happy with how mine turned out. Now, I think you all are waiting for something from me. Our secret word is pink lemonade. You know we had to do something with pink. So Crafting Cousins' secret word is pink lemonade. Good luck, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use these beads I got from Hobby Lobby when they were on clearance, some yarn from my stash, a pendant I got from the thrift store, some twine from Hobby Lobby, some gold metallic paint from Crafter's Closet, and a darning needle. So the first thing I did was pour out my beads and separated them out so that I had all of the black, all of the white, and the black and white stripe. Now I'm going to take that little pendant that I got from the thrift store and I'm just going to give it one light coat of that gold metallic paint. It was looking a little dull and I just wanted to brighten it up some but I did not want to cover the detail that was on it. Now I'm going to line up my beads so I know what pattern I want and then I'm going to take my twine and thread it onto my darning needle and start threading on my beads. This darning needle really makes it so much easier to string up your beads. Once I got my beads on my string, I got to looking at them and I thought, you know, these would really be cute if they were checked instead of striped. So I grabbed my Jot Permanent Marker and I started turning my stripes into checks. And I love how this turned out. This garland is not something that I saw on the McKenzie Childs website. I just thought it would be really cute to complement my picture frame. So I wanted to throw one together. Now I'm going to take that pendant and string it onto the end of my garland and tie a triple knot and then trim off my string. I want to make a tassel so I grab some black and white yarn and I'm wrapping it around the glass <laughs> from a picture frame but y'all probably don't want to do this. You probably should use some cardboard. I wrapped it about 14 times and then I grabbed my red yarn and I did wrap it twice but I do end up taking one piece out. Now I'm going to take the end of my garland and I run it underneath all of my yarn and tie it into a knot. And then I'm just going to use my scissors and cut away my yarn. You saw me take one of those strings out. I just wanted one red string. Then I took another piece of twine and I wrapped it around the top of my yarn about three times and tied it into a triple knot and trimmed it off. And now I'm going to go back and tighten up the knot that I put at the end of my garland so it holds my tassel on and then I tie it into a double knot and trim it as well. Now we're just going to gather up all of our yarn and I'm going to trim off those ends and make them even and we'll fluff it out. And there's our little bead garland. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Like I said, I did not get this from the McKenzie Childs website. It was just inspired by her colors. I love the whimsy of it and I love it with my frame. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. 
There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Kay. My project today is inspired by this wooden letter that I saw on the McKenzie Child's website. I'm going to use this wooden black S that I've had hanging in my foyer for about five years. The sticker on the back says it originally came from Michael's. I'm going to use some black and white chalk paint, some Mod Podge, a rainbow assortment of chalk paint. I'm just using these smaller bottles. And finally, some painter's tape, some paint brushes, and my Jot Permanent Markers. The first thing I'm going to do is give my letter a good sanding because it had some rough areas. I probably got it when it was marked down. Now I'm going to take painter's tape and go around all of the edges so that I won't get any paint on them when I paint the front of the letter. Just going to carefully cover all of the outside. Now I'm going in with some chalk paint and I'm going to apply two good coats to the front of my S. And now, after I have applied Mod Podge on top of this paint, by the way, I'm going to go in with some painter's tape and cover up the front so that I won't get black paint on the white. And then I go in with the black chalk paint and paint all of the edges. Yes, it was black already, but it was not in good shape. So it needed a new coat of paint. Now I'm going to draw a grid system on top of my S. I'm going to use this quilting ruler and I'm going to draw lines at half inch increments. I will just work my way across and then when I'm finished of course I'll go in the opposite direction. Then to paint the S I decided I would use my Jot Permanent Markers that I get at the Dollar Tree. And I just used a credit card at first and traced around it and then I decided I would just freehand and draw them in because half inch increments is really pretty small. About two thirds of the way through, I took out my master's touch marker that I got from Hobby Lobby and I went in and outlined all of my little tiny squares. I wanted to make sure I didn't color in the wrong ones. And so then I proceeded to finish coloring in my letter. And this is how it turned out. I think it's quite cute. Now I'm going to take those rainbow colors of chalk paint and I'm going to color in just the center of the squares using different ones. This is how the inspiration piece was. It had different colors just through the center and I'm doing this with a dry brush technique. Just brushing it on, wiping off any excess that I need to. And there's my finished piece. I love how this turned out and I'm going to place it right back into my foyer. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these black plastic buckets that my husband brought home last week. When I saw it, I couldn't just throw it away. I thought we can do something else with this some Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, some gold metallic paint from Crafter's Closet, and some tools from my work caddy. When I was looking at the McKenzie Child's website, I saw this little waste bin and I thought it was absolutely adorable, but I cannot pay $88 for a waste bin. When my husband brought home that bucket, I thought that would be the perfect thing to use to try to recreate this. So the first thing I did was take my little bucket and my Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and I start giving it a good coat. Now this actually ended up taking about four and a half coats to get a good coverage. This plastic is really slick. You can see how streaky this looks and to get a good, nice, solid coverage, it took all of those coats. Now last week was our anniversary and my husband brought me home some flowers. He got this bucket from the lady that worked in the floral department at Publix. He was telling her that he didn't want to pour water out in his car, so she gave him a couple of these to carry the flowers in. 
if you would like to have one they have these at kroger at publix at winn dixie at walmart and all of them are really nice about letting you have them they get their flowers in these and they really don't keep them once the flowers are gone once my paint was completely dry, I took another strip of my placemat, and this one is about three quarters of an inch, and I started making my vertical stripes. Now, I actually did want to use tape for this, but I took a small piece of my paper tape and put it on the bottom of my bucket. It pulled that paint right up, so I knew this was not going to work. So I just went back to my pa uh, placemat strip. This works out perfectly, and I didn't have any problems with it. You just need to make sure that because the bottom is smaller than the top, that you just kind of move it and judge it around a little bit so that you get your straight lines. Once I got my vertical lines on, then I started my horizontal and you see that I am just kind of moving this around my bucket and I make sure that the bottom of my plastic lines up with the top of my line. Now, once I got all my lines on here, I ended up grabbing my <laughs> jot permanent marker again and started filling them in. For this one, I actually did intend to paint these blocks in. I wasn't going to use a marker, but y'all, I've been running fever all day. I did not feel good, and I knew that this was going to be a faster option for me. So I grabbed my permanent marker and just started filling them in. Now, I'm not going to make you watch all of this. I actually ended up moving to the sofa where I was more comfortable, and this was actually kind of therapeutic. Once everything was dry, I ended up taking my black permanent marker and going along the bottom and just cleaning this up where I had gotten some paint on there. And then I took my gold metallic paint and started painting the top rim of this. Now, looking at the Mackenzie Childs one, hers is silver, but the gold matches the frame that I did, so I decided to go with the gold. It did take two good coats to get a solid coverage on this. Then I took my gold paint and my brush and I would just dip my brush in it and then rub it off on the paper and do a small swipe on each one of my black checks. She does this in a lot of hers. I think it gives it more depth and it gives it more whimsy and I really like how it looks so I was happy that I did it. Once that was dry, I took my Mod Podge and I gave it a really good coat. I am using the Gloss Mod Podge and I did put on a heavy coat on this because I did not want my paint to get chipped off. And there's our finished project. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It isn't exactly like hers. Hers is more perfect and her checks aren't as small as mine, but I'm really happy with it. It is the perfect size for my office. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!